Are you an aspiring coder trying to decide what programming language to learn first? And I get it. It's confusing. There's a lot of choices out there. So today I'm going to give you five factors that you can use to help you filter down those choices and find your first programming language. So hello and welcome. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach beginners to be professional coders by learning to code the right way. So back to the question, what programming language should you learn first? Well, it's a common but broad question. And unfortunately, when you toss this out to online forums, you're gonna run into bias and incomplete answers and people who don't really understand your personal situation. And this answer is so important. You shouldn't be outsourcing it to any random person on the internet, including me. So my goal for this video is to give you five factors that you can balance with your knowledge of your personal situation and make a better choice of a starting programming language. So first up is employability. It is crucial for you to do research about the regions where you want to live and work because those job ads are gonna tell you what's in demand in your region. And one thing you're gonna find is that a lot of tech skills tend to cluster in certain regions. And the reason for this is when you have a couple large anchor employers in a region, everybody is demanding technical talent. And it's much easier to find technical talent with skills that are tied to those larger employers. So what happens is smaller employers tend to get drug along by the larger ones just because they need to tap the same available talent pool. Next, you need to assess a language's ease of learning. Now, this is more than just the syntax. It's also a measure of what kind of learning resources are available. Is the documentation good? Are there online courses and books and videos available? These things are all important factors. Don't just choose the easiest language. You also need to tie this in to employability. Like for example, Scratch is a really easy language to learn. In fact, they use it to teach middle schoolers the basics of programming. But professionally, there are very few jobs using Scratch. So the third factor is transferability. Now, what I mean by this is that languages in general have some things in common. They all have variables, they have loops, they have conditions and things like that. But some languages have even more in common with others, whether it's syntax, how developers approach problems, how they organize their code. So a good example of this is the C based languages, and that's C++, Java and C Sharp. If you learn one of these languages well, it's much easier to learn the others because they have a lot in common. Now, when this comes to employability, that means it's gonna be much easier for you to transfer from one language to another, or if you're consulting, being able to code in several languages efficiently. The fourth factor is versatility. Now, languages are just tools. Almost any language can do anything you want. The question is, do employers use that language in that way. Now, as an example, I'm gonna pick on C++. You can build web applications using C++, but employers, they don't really use it that often for that case. So when you're talking about spending your limited time learning a language, if you really wanna be a web developer, C++ might not be the best language for you. So the last factor is stability. And this one's important for people who don't want to frequently relearn their skills, or if you're learning part-time at your own pace, it means it's less likely that you're going to find outdated resources or have new stuff come out while you're learning and then have to unlearn what you just did. Now, let me give you an example of a situation where stability has been very low in professional development, and that's the internet. So when the internet first came out, you had computer monitors and everybody used computer monitors and all those computer monitors were similar in size and resolution. And then over the next 20 years, we saw things like smartphones come up and then tablets came and then we got higher resolution like 4K. And now we even have visual devices in our cars and on refrigerators. Well, anybody who's working on the user interface side of things 
has had to relearn their skill sets and rethink how they design things so that they work well on those applications. And we've all seen even websites today where you put it on a smartphone and it looks like crap. And that's because somebody didn't keep their skills up to date. Now, if you would like to go more in depth with this topic and how to choose your first language as well as other things, head on over to the Skill Foundry website, link in the description below, and sign up for our free Getting Started in Software Development course. Now, at this point, I can hear some of you in the audience saying, Eric, come on, man. You gave me these five factors. Don't you have any advice on the languages that score highly on those? Well, okay, I do. So here are some languages in alphabetical order that you should consider because they score highly across these factors. And that's C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, and Python. So that wraps things up. And I hope that this video helped you think more clearly about the factors that you should consider when picking your first language and how you can apply those to your own personal goals and situation. Now, if this video was helpful or entertaining, smash that like button, subscribe and follow, and we'll see you on the flip side.